if I make my bed in hell, it means, uh, here's somebody that's in rebellion. Listen closer. Somebody's in rebellion and says, look, I can't take this anymore. I don't see the hand of God on my life. I, don't, I just don't want this anymore. And there's a spirit of rebellion rises up and says, I'm going my own way. And really what it means in, in the original Hebrews, I give myself over to the devil. I just give myself. I'm going to give myself into hell. I'm going to lay down in my sin. And, and the psalmist David is, is, is the, the psalmist here is saying, if, if even if I, I say that's enough and I give up and I try to make my bed in hell, even there your hand will hold me. The hand that touched you will hold you. You say, Brother Wilkerson, you, you, you're trying to say that I can never backslide. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that God knows why some people give up. He knows the despair. He knows people come to the end of the rope. He knows that they come to their wit's end. And He knows we make stupid mistakes. But when the Lord puts His hand on you, He's not going to let you go. He will go with you into your deepest despair. He'll go into your deepest sin. And he's going to say, I'm not letting go. I'll put my hand on you. I am not letting go. How many have left uh, Timothy house? Brother? Remember, how many have walked out, went out, said that's enough, and they go out for a night? A week? And all hell breaks loose? And suddenly they find themselves in a room with a Bible again? And they're looking in and the Lord said, I'll cleanse your blood. And something rises up and they get on the phone and says, can I come back? What is it? It's the hand of God. You tried to make your bed in hell and God says, I have my hand on you. Hallelujah. The devil tried to destroy my son Gary. Came home one day as a senior in high school. He said, threw himself in the bed. He said, Dad, there's no God. There's no God. The devil tried literally to destroy him. The devil wanted to make his bed in hell. The devil wanted that boy to say, go out and be like the rest. Go out and give yourself to the devil. Just go out and give yourself. And I, I was so shocked, and yet the Lord didn't let me show it on my face. And I, I couldn't reason with him because sometimes when you go through this testing of your faith as a young person, no dad, no mom, nobody can help you. You're all alone with Jesus. But the Lord, if you have a heart for him, he'll bring you through that. If you just say, Lord, I don't understand, help me understand. He'll give you the understanding. And all I could do was pray. For three months, my son went through that. But I know one thing, the hand of God was on him, and I didn't have to worry. I prayed for him, but I knew God was going to hold him through it. Some of you are going through the test of your life, and God's hand is on you. And my Bible says, even though you make your bed in hell, I'm going to hold you. Even the devil tries to destroy you, I'm going to bring you out. Glory to God. Let that be hope. God keeps breaking through your darkness with light. Verses 11, 12. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light unto me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. All right, look at me, please. This is so important. David said, thou art my lamp, O Lord. The Lord will lighten my darkness. In verse 6, thou hast laid in Psalms 88, I don't, I'm not going to read it. If you go to Psalms 88 tonight before you go to bed, you'll hear one of the most mournful, pitiful chapters and books in all the Bible. Absolute. Oh God, you have forgotten me. You've laid me in chains. I'm in prison. I'm like a forgotten man and, and all the confusion and the hurt and the pain. And David knew what that was all about. Darkness. And in Psalms 88, the writer says, you left me in darkness. And in the Hebrew, it says, you left me in darknesses. Plural, not just one darkness, but darkness. And you have left me in a pit. And the writer says, Lord, there's darkness, but the darkness hideth not from the light. And here's the difference. When the Lord has his hand on you, there may be times that you go through darkness. Not just one darkness, but many darknesses. 
But Jesus always comes through with his light. He always gives you peace and rest. And you begin to see the face of Jesus in your trouble. Hallelujah. Do you have that in you in any measure at all? Are you able in your darkness to still worship him? Are you still able to praise the Lord and the light breaks through? That's one of the evidences of the hand of God upon your life. If you have a growing knowledge in you that your birth was not in vain, but God had a plan for your life, even when you're in your mother's womb, even in your mother's room, womb, verses 13 to 18. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knows right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eye did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In thy book all my members were written, which in continued were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than I than the sand. When I wake, I am still with thee. Look at me, please. David said, Lord, I know something. I know that you called me when I was in my mother's womb. I know. And folks, listen. Young people, listen to me good now. I know this as sure as I stand here and I have the mind of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus has touched you, you're going to know it. The Holy Spirit's going to know it by showing you somewhere along the line. He's going to start showing you. My life has a purpose to it. God is not going to let me waste my life. I wasn't born. My mother didn't bring me into this world just to end up as a waste of drug addict or an alcoholic or a bum. I wasn't born for that. I was born for God's eternal purpose for my life. And even before I was born, God named me in the womb. My dad and mom may have given me a name, but the Lord has a name for me also that he chose. And even when I was being formed in my mother's womb, the Lord put his hand upon me. He, the Lord didn't put his hand on me just when I was down there. He put his hand on me when I was in the womb. In fact, before I was born, he had thoughts, good thoughts toward me. He said, I've got a plan for David. I've got a plan. And there are many of you sitting here right now. The Lord had a plan for you, even in your mother's womb. I don't care if your mother was a drunkard. God could have put his hand upon you. He's, and there's a sense, there's a sense. It's not just, I don't call it a sense of destiny. I have known all my life. I never felt special. I never felt great. I've had a hard time all my life with feeling inferior. And that's not been it. But I've known. I know it when I pray. I know it when I preach. I know it everywhere I go. I know it when the enemy comes against me. I know it every waking hour. That when I was a baby in my mother's womb, Jesus put his hand on me. Now, it, you, you could be like Ernie Shaver. Jesus, could have call, Jesus didn't call him 10 years ago. Jesus called him before he was born and put his hand upon him. He had to go through so much trial and testing before he came into the realization. But the Lord had his hand all the way, even though he made his bed in hell. And so many of you here right now, it took a long time, but God had his hand on you. He has his hand on you tonight. Hallelujah. There'll be a voice in you that keeps saying, you're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. God says, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to use you. Hallelujah. And when you feel hurt over the sinfulness of wicked people, that's in verse 19 and 22. Look at it. Sure, surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, O bloody men. They speak against thee wickedly, O God. Thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Now that doesn't mean you hate people, but you hate their sin. Young, young people, I'm going to ask teenagers here. You heard last week about 
the two teenage lovers who gave birth to a baby in a motel and the autopsy shows that the baby evidently was beaten on the head and was killed. How do you feel about that? Do you have a cry inside? Do you cry about that? Is there a cry? You see, the, the, the amazing thing is that if they had waited just, uh, or if they had just called an abortion doctor 10 minutes before, and he'd have brought his suction machine in and poked a hole, turned the baby around and poked a hole in the brain and sucked the brain out, it would have been a legal death. It would have been legal. Maybe 15 minutes apart. I don't justify what those kids did, but there has to be a grief in your heart where we have a society that has robbed children of their fear of death, robbed children of their value of life, so that these things can be done. You, you see, young person, are you here tonight? And when you see all the wicked things are being done against the name of Jesus, does it grieve you? When you hear your friends curse, you have a grief in your sight. Is there a sadness? They're taking the Lord's name in vain. If you had the touch of God on you, you hate sin. You hate it. You can't go to a movie like I preached this morning. You can't go to a movie where the name of Jesus is cursed. You can't sit and watch a VCR movie where the name of Jesus Christ is taken in vain because there's a cry in your heart. And you'll turn it off immediately because you have a grief in your heart. You grieve the way they treat your Savior. They, you grieve about it. Hallelujah. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. If you have the hand of Jesus on you, you don't want anything in your life that's evil or wicked. You don't want anything that would grieve the Lord in your life. Listen, don't go the hard way. Come the right way. Say, Jesus, I'm going to surrender to your hand right now. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit in the next 10 minutes to speak to everybody in this building 21 years of age and under in a special way. If you've not yet had the hand of Jesus on you, and there's something in you says, Brother David, I want the hand of Jesus on me. I want Jesus to touch me in this meeting tonight. Let's make it 25 and under. Let's make it those who are single only first. And I'll get to the rest of you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to go all through balcony and the main floor. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to go all through this church. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to put his hand to find everyone that's reaching out. If you say, Brother David, I want Jesus to touch my life tonight. I want you to get up out of your seat and come down here and let me pray for you right now. Because where you're coming to right now is the touch of his hand. You're coming for the touch of his hand all through this place. Heavenly Father, find every young person, 25 and under. Find every one of them, Lord, that you're desiring right now, that you want to touch. Lord, bring them down to this altar and let them stand here and say, Jesus, tonight, I want to give my whole life to you. I want everything to be given to you, Jesus. Touch me. Touch me. Jesus, put your hand on me. Touch me, Jesus.